Yes, yeah, thank you. Uh, holy yeah, sure. Appreciate it. Is that kind of like yeah, yeah, true, true. Don't you think? I do. I do. Well, like that's pretty. I think it's a. Kissing one thing. Like being in the holiday. <laughs> Sorry. I like Christmas, Mother's Day. I like I like buying my wife things because just because I don't like to be in a situation where it's like Valentine's Day. I have to give you this, but <laughs> I'd rather just bring her some flowers. Fun. Okay, guys, gals, uh, we got lost. Do we need to pray? Who would like to pray today? Nobody. We're not praying. Oh. Our Father in heaven, we're grateful for today, and we're grateful for this opportunity that we have to be in class. We ask that the Spirit will open our minds, and that we'll be able to learn the material that we're given today, and that Brother Rich will be guided in his, how he can best help us, and how we can best help him. We love you so very much, and we say these things humbly in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you for the cupcakes. Though. You bet. Okay, guys, today we are going to um, take a you review questions, uh, maybe one to two, um, not over things that we haven't covered yet. So, uh, no evens, okay? So don't ask me an even numbered problem. I'm not going to do an even number, okay? Um, and you know, now, not that it's illegal, but you can get help with a tutor. You know, you can get help from friends, and help each other. But I just I don't want to take class time to do even problems, okay? Also. Um, we are going to we are going to cover um, the last two word problem types, uh, which included uh, the two part problem as well as simple arithmetic. Um, those problems constituted uh, numbers uh, one and seven, and numbers three, five, twenty one, and thirty one. Okay, uh, it's impressive that I know that and remember it. I'm patting myself on the back for that. Um, all my female counterpart teachers really get pissed when I do that. They find it very entertaining. Thank you. <laughs> um, so, we are not going to answer questions over 1, 7, 3, 5, 21, and 31. Okay? We're going to um, save those for, good. We're going to save those uh, for our lecture today. Okay, so don't ask me about those. You guys cool? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Here, I'm going to steal one for Brother Rich. There you go. I hate frosting. It stayed on there. Perfect for me. <laughs> yeah. That'll be for me for later. Okay. All right. Um, and then we need to talk about section uh, 2.7. We're going to lecture over 2.7. All right. I need your undivided attention. There are some of you who missed last time. Some of you that uh, don't know this, but everybody needs to understand this. We have a test. It opens on Friday. It'll be open Friday, Saturday, Monday, Tuesday. Monday is a holiday. No one's going to be here on Monday. We are going to review in depth for this test beginning next class period and going into Friday. We're gonna review across two days for this, for this test. Every day is critical. If you miss, you're on your own. You'll watch the videos, but I'm just telling you, we will review things in class live that we don't cover in a video, okay? And we will prepare you very well for this next test. This next test is hard. I don't want you to get psyched out, but I surely do not want you to underprepare or underestimate what's on this test. The chapter R test and the chapter one test, um, you know, raise your hand if you found those pretty straightforward. You felt like, hey, I, I got this, right? Okay, good. That's what we want. How many people did better than they've ever done on a math test before? Raise your hand if you've done better than, okay, that's the goal right there. Okay, we're building some confidence, some momentum. But now we're kicking it into gear and we're going to take on another opponent, a little more challenging opponent, okay? I think you can lick it. I think you can beat it, but you got to prepare big time. There are five word problems on the test. We're going to go over every one of them. Uh, we'll cover those beginning next time and Again, like I say, we'll, we'll complete all that review on Friday. So don't miss is ultimately what I'm telling you. If you have to, you, you, you just got to do the best you can to get what you need out of, you know, the YouTube lectures or whatever lecture. Yes? What's the, uh, since it opens Friday, what's the last Tuesday, 
by midnight. But it's, it's all published. It's all in there. I have one student, pay attention, I have one student that still to this day does not understand the difference between initial take and retake period. Okay, are we all clear on that? Did you get on there and it tells you the date that you take the test. But I always publish an announcement that tells you all those dates. And I'll be doing that over the next couple of days here so you know when's the chapter two test opening, when do we have to take it by, when are the extended retakes, all that kind of crap, okay? Cool. All right, do you guys have any questions from section 2.6 that you would like me to do about geometry, consecutive integers, percents, the average problem, number 35, any of those problems? If not, we're gonna jump into our next two word problem types, okay? Yeah? Um, it's just like questions from the homework that we've been working on so far. Is yep. That what you're asking? yep, that's what I'm saying, 2.6. Any of those problems except evens and 1, 7, 3, 5, 21, and 31. Because we're, we're, we're going to cover those. Um, right? Well, we're not going to cover the evens. That's for you to do. Yeah. So. Yeah. On what? I'm here. I can see you. You can't see me. I got to look at that magic mirror. <laughs> I know, it's all good. That's always what I'm entertained. Yes? Um, That's so, okay, I hear you. Uh, What's up? Um, so on the 2.6, um, I went to the math tutor lab, and mm -hmm. not even like the tutor really know how to like understand the problem. What did you tell me the problem? Um, I believe it was number seven. Seven? Yeah. Okay. Look at this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be kind of rude, but, I'm just, but I've said this four times. I'm not doing one and seven. Oh, I sorry, will. Sorry, sorry, no, it's sorry, okay. Sorry. I will sorry. during the lecture today. No, you're good. I'm asking if you guys have any questions over geometry problems, consecutive integer problems, any of the others that you were told to do. It's all good. We're going to do seven, but just not right now. You're good. Anything else? All right. I'm happy to do it. There was one about, let's do one. Let's do one. Uh, 15. Who wants to read 15? 15. 15. Fifteen? Yeah. yeah. Was that one you wanted to do? Yeah. Oh my gosh! Fifteen. Read it to me. Um, a standard rectangular highway billboard sign has a perimeter of 124 feet. Stop. Okay. Listen to this. This problem is on the test. Your, your spidey senses should tingle when I say that. Okay? <laughs> you should be like, uh, you know, your incredible hope should be busting out when I say that. Okay? Whenever I say this problem is on the test, you guys should be like, Freaking out. You know what I'm saying? Ah, man. It's called low five. Okay. Um, so, what type of a problem is this? Is it a consecutive integer problem? Come on, guys. Y'all got to participate. Okay. We're going to get what we put into this. So, let's put something into this right now. Do I need this class? Do I need this class? Uh, no. no. Do you? Yes. Yes. So put something into it so you get a lot out of it, okay? I'm ready to roll, okay? What, is this, is this a consecutive integer problem? No. no. Is it an average problem? No. Is it a percent problem? No. Is it a geometry problem? Yes. 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 Okay, why? Because they said perimeter, and they said rectangle. If they have a shape, and the measurement of that shape, it's a geometry problem every time, okay? And what formula are we gonna use? So we know the plan right now, we do. What formula? Perimeter. Perimeter of what? Uh, a square. Rectangle. Rectangle equals? 2L two two L plus 2W. Two 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 Very good. Okay. That's the hardest part of the problem. We know it already. We've only read one sentence. Read the next one. Oh, by the way, P equals 124 is what I hear. I bet there's a comparison statement coming because Brother Rich told me they love to use comparison statements in geometry problems. Here it comes. <laughs> the length is 6 feet more than 3 times the width. The length is six feet more than three times the width. Boom! There's a comparison statement. Let's interpret it. The length, what's that? L, L is equals. equals six to six, more than? Plus. plus. Give it a plus three times? Oh yeah, that means multiply. The width? X or W. Oh, X or W, but let's go W since we're doing L's and W's on this, okay? Did you know that you could only solve a one variable equation? Did you know that? Think about it for a second. You say, 
Well, if we solve A equals one half BH for B, this problem's on the test. <gasps> Spidey senses. Let's do it again. Okay, here we go. Huh. Now, will this exact problem be on the test? Mm, maybe. And different derivations of it, but you know, they could have like big B equals one third, you know, AH or something weird like that. Okay, and you solve for the A or something. You can handle it. Okay, same thing with that problem right there. You'll have something like that. Okay, so look at this. If I tell you to solve for B, can I get B alone? What do I do here? I gotta, what do I do? Come on. Multiply by two. Get rid of Multiply fraction. everything by two. Two times one half B H. Remember this? Like, why are we doing this when we're doing that? Just trust me. Okay, I got two big A equals uh, B H. That's an H. Okay, I wanna solve for little B. What do I do now? Divide by H. Divide by H. Divide by H. So I have B equals two A over H, okay? So did we solve for B? Was there more than one variable in here? And you're like, well, didn't we just solve for a variable when there's more than one variable? Kinda, we got the variable alone, but do we have a numerical value for B? Yes or no? No. No, and that's my point. You can only get a numerical value for a variable when there's only one variable in the equation. How many variables in this equation right now? Uh, two, three. Three, P, L, W, okay? What's P? Okay, it's 124, right? <coughs> they gave you that. What's L? Like six, uh, six plus three W. It's six plus three W, right? So when we get to see L equals this, so we get to substitute it in for here. So now we get two equals six plus three times W, right? And then we have plus two W comes down, right? That two W. Now do I have a one variable equation? Yes. And now I can solve it. Understood? So yeah. the comparison statement will allow you to plug that in, okay? Yeah. Isn't that example just simplification? What's that? Isn't that just simplifying? No, you have an equal sign. Oh. This was section 2.4, solving, da da da, da three-step process solving, fractions, parentheses, like terms, one side, addition, principle, multiplication, principle, still using all the same stuff, but it's solving formulas. And formulas have more than one variable, so you're just getting the variable alone. Remember that little section we did? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. still solving but no numerical value in it. Yeah, yeah cool. We're basically creating new formulas from old formulas. So now that formula right there is the formula for the base of a triangle instead of the area of a triangle, right? Yeah, think about that. Base equals two times area over its height. Yeah, cool, all right. So if you were in a situation where you were building or you're doing some construction, right? And um, you, you, you don't care what the area is, but you only have so much uh, workable space and, and, and you can build a base, and so you're trying, okay, what, how, you know, if we have base of this size, what can we do, right? You see what I'm saying? Like, if you have certain variables but not others, then creating a new formula makes it more efficient for you, right? Yeah, yeah, cool. Okay, so we come back to this. We can solve this. Uh, do I have fractions? No. no. Parentheses? Yes. yes. Okay, so I have 124 equals 2 times 12 plus 6w plus 2w. Agreed? Yes. Do you have like terms? Oh yeah, 6w and 2w make? 8w. Okay, so we got 124 equals 12 plus 8w. Okay, and I found simplicity. I subtract 12 from each side, and I get 112 equals 8w. And I divide by 8, divide by 8, and my spidey senses say that that equals 14. Did your calculator say that? I, sorry, why did you get 2w and 6w? That's okay. Look up here. Perimeter equals 2 times length plus 2 times width. Why? That's a length, that's a width, that's a length, that's a width. And perimeter is the sum of sides. I have one width and another width, but if I went width plus length plus width plus length, that's a long formula. Mm -hmm. So I just say, hey, I got two lengths and two widths, right? Mm -hmm. Cool? So remember, length equals 6 plus 3w. Agreed? Yeah. Look at 6 plus 3 times w is 3w. I plug that in for length. Cool? Uh -huh. Cool. Still have 2 times the width. Uh -huh. That drops down. So I have 2 times... 6 plus 3w, which is this, plus 2 times the w that was already there. Uh -huh. Does that make sense? Um, yeah, uh -huh. look, 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 look. Blue, do you understand that, that equals L? Yes or no? Yes. Okay, so there's L, right? And I substitute that in for L. I still have 2w in the equation, though. See, this now becomes this. This 2L becomes 2 times 6 plus 3w. But the 2w still carries down in. Yes? Mm -hmm. You good? Yeah. Okay, totally cool, good cool. On that part. Okay, now I multiplied that two times that three w, right? Because mm -hmm. I have parentheses and I got six w, and I already had the two w. Oh, two. gotcha. Ah. 
Yeah. <laughs> cool. Smoke it, man. Yeah. Yeah. You're smoking. Okay. Yeah, well. All right. And so W equals 14. We cool? No. No? What does it equal? Well, W does equal 14, but it's 14 feet, and you still have to find oh. length. So one, we should label, because this yeah, is footies, <laughs> and this is feet. <laughs> and read the last sentence of the problem. Uh, find the dimensions of the sign. Find the dimensions. Dimensions? <laughs> dimensions? Okay? Fetcher? Yeah? You know, I went an entire semester with my roommates, and every suh sound we whistled. Oh, really? What's up? You know? <laughs> How's it going? You sure are sexy. You know? That's hard to do. You know what I mean? We were good at it. Is that how you got married to your wife? Oh no, that was not a turn on for girls. <laughs> you know? We were trying really hard to not get dates that semester, you know? Oh, yeah. yeah, I can tell. Yeah. No. Okay, no. anyways. <laughs> okay, and so we plug this back in, right? And we say, all right, well, the length equals six plus three times 14. Three times 14 is 42. Yes or no? Yes. And 42 plus 6 is 48. Therefore, the length equals 48 feet. And you have to have both answers to do that problem correctly. We cool? And you have a problem like that on the test. Very good. Okay, our next word problem type. We need to make sure you understand. We're going to draw it right now. You guys are welcome to write while I'm writing. In fact, just do it. Don't be welcome. Just do it. Okay? We're talking now about the two part problem. You only got a little time to write this, so go for it. The identifier. Well, there is no specific word. This becomes a little more challenging to identify because we're talking that within the story, you know, they call these story problems sometimes. Within the story, um, we are breaking, cutting, organizing, etc., a whole into two parts. Okay? What is the given? Uh, it's the plan, which is nice. So it is a formula, and it's the formula of sum of parts. It says P sub 1 plus P sub 2 equals P sub total. Okay? You don't know what sub means. What does sub mean? It's the... Say it louder. Under. Under the sea. Under the sea. Who sang that song? Sebastian. Sebastian, that little bastion. Um... <laughs> Like the opposite of a fatherless child, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Anyways, um, of course, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, oh, these are little rings. Oh my yeah. gosh, you guys can wear those tonight. <gasps> what, oh, so, is, is there? What, what's going on? <laughs> it's Valentine's. Oh, really? It is Valentine's Day. You wear that ring. <laughs> wear them both. Okay, <laughs> you guys ready? Um. Sub, please listen. Sub means under. Submarine. Marine means sea. Submarines mean under the sea. Think about it. It drives under the ocean, okay? When I say P sub one, P sub two, I'm talking about subscript. Subscript means underwriting. In math, listen, when we write under the variables or under the numbers, it's not math. It's not numerical. It's the English language. Super. Super is the opposite of sub. So what does it mean? Uh, above. above. Superman. <gasps> he flies above us. He has more strength than us. He's above a man in every way. Okay? You listen to this? <laughs> Superscript means above writing. Superscript in math? That's math. Okay? P to the second. Okay? Now it's an exponent. Understood? Okay? So this means my first part plus my second part equals the sum of parts, okay? So we could say part number one plus part number two equals the sum of parts. Make sense? Okay. I want you, no? Doesn't make sense? No, it does. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, I tried doing the Scooby-Doo lab like at 8.30 or 10 or 15 in class, but like you, you were busy at the board. So oh, sorry, I man. I didn't want to 
They were they were they were into it today, man. Oh really? Oh yeah, man. Is it because of the, you gave him cupcakes? No, I threatened to, to kill them all. Anyways, um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I want you to open up your textbooks. We are going to use our textbooks throughout the rest of the class period, so please get them out. If you don't have one, make sure you open up Canvas so you can look at stuff. I want you to read problem number two to me. Problem number two. I need a reader. I need a reader. In 2.6? What? 2.6? 2.6, number 2, yep. A 72 inch board is cut into two pieces. Okay. One piece is two inches longer than the other. Find the lengths of the pieces. Okay. All right, let's think about this. So they use the word length, and now and then I'll give the students this, oh, length, that's a geometry problem. No, Fetchers, I told you <laughs> it has to be a shape. Okay, they don't mention a rectangle or a circle, you know, or a trapezoid or a hemorrhoid, which would be a different subject altogether, <laughs> but they don't mention a shape. Are we cool? So this is a two-part problem. They're taking a 72-inch board, 72 inch is six feet, if you know your times table, six times 12 is 72, and they're cutting it into two pieces. Now the brain, I told you, likes the path of least resistance, so the brain assumes when we say we cut a board into two pieces, what does the brain assume? Half. That we cut it in half. Okay, don't assume that. You could cut it in many, many, many different, you know, pairs, okay? Not just in half. And this is not cut in half, just FYI, all right? Now, how many people have done any amount of construction in their lives in here? Any amount of construction, okay? For you that are into construction, I always get somebody that says, well, Brother Rich, we are going to lose an eighth of an inch of wood from the blade. Thank you, Sherlock freaking Holmes, okay? Listen, I've done construction my whole life, you're absolutely right, and in the construction world, we have to take that into consideration because if we cut this board into two pieces, if we put the pieces back together, we will not have a 72 inch board anymore. We will have a 71 and 3 eighths inch board, you know, or a 71, I'm sorry, 71 and, you know, like three quarters inch board or 71 and 7 eighths inch board, okay? We'll lose about an eighth of an inch to sawdust, okay? We're not going to get into that technicality, and the book most assuredly does not, okay? So, look up here. Your plan is going to be P sub 1 plus P sub 2 equals P sub total. It's a very simple equation. Lots of word problems are based on this very simple equation. One part plus another part equals the sum of parts, okay? Everybody, help me. What is our first part? One, two, three. X. It is X. And why is it X? Always start with X. Everyone! Always start with X. Repeat! Always start with X. Okay, what do you start with? X. X. Don't tell me you don't know all the questions. Shops. Okay? No, don't do that. So if our second piece, it says one piece is two inches longer, then what's piece two? Two X. X plus two. X plus two. What's piece out? You go out. Not doing that. Yes, get me out of here. Yeah, piece one, piece two, piece out. Eh? Okay, you got slow, man. <laughs> Who watched the Super Bowl yesterday? Raise your hand. That pieced me off. Okay, look up here. <laughs> I wanted the Bengals to win. They had the game, man. Bengals. Morons. They could have won. Okay, all right. Piece one, X plus is part of the formula. Piece two, X plus two. Piece total? 72. 72. Okay. Any analyst? What's X plus X? 2X. 2X plus two. Equals 72, subtract 2, subtract 2. We got 2x, this cancels out. Equals 70, divide by 2, divide by 2. x equals 35. But they didn't ask for the shorter piece. What did they ask for? What's the last sentence? The lengths of the pieces. The lengths of the pieces. Pieces. Try to say pieces like that. One, two, three. Pieces. <laughs> you suck. Pieces. So fun. <laughs> yeah, it's so fun watching you do it. Like, oh. Good. Okay. All right, so our other piece is two more. So what's piece two? 32 and 37, right? Inches. We cool? You got that? Listen, guys. The 10 o'clock class, truthfully, they've been good. But today, you're beyond them. Because it's not that you're not interacting. You're just like dead and you're not even really paying attention. Listen, I just did an extra credit problem for you. It's worth three points. Part of your homework that's going to be due on Wednesday, Scooby-Doo. And, um, <laughs> hey. 
<laughs> Ragnarok. Okay, so we said number two, which is an even problem. Let's talk about number seven, okay, the two-part problem. So we come back to our chart over here, and I told you that in the bottom corner, I'd always tell you what numbers would be in section 2-6, numbers one and seven. How many people attempted to do number seven? Raise your hand if you attempted to do it. Okay, good. That's a lot. Good. I'm glad to see I told you not to procrastinate. Sounds like you're not procrastinating. Sounds like you tackled a lot of this. Okay. Um, I need somebody else, somebody else to read number seven. I want uh, a noob, a noob to read number seven. Do it. The I did it wrong. I did it wrong. I did it wrong. Yeah. Okay. The idiot rod. <laughs> <laughs> nope. The I did a rod. The I did a rod sled dog race extends for 1,400. Or the 1,049 miles from Anchorage to Nome. If a musher is twice as far from Anchorage as from Nome, how many miles of the race has a musher completed? Okay, a couple of things. How many people have ever seen the movie Balto? Balto? Right here, yeah. have you seen Balto? Yeah? Not the dog, not the wolf. Yeah? You seen that show? It's a good one. If you haven't seen it, rent it, watch it. Hey, you and your husband should watch this tonight. Listen, Balto, I mean, it's the all-American love story, you know? A talking dog that's part wolf, you know, picks up on a hot dog, you know? And I don't mean the kind with mustard and ketchup and relish. I'm talking like she is fine. And those two can talk to each other, and, and people can even hear them. Well, okay, maybe they can't, but we can. What an amazing show. All right, listen. There have been a number of movies made over the years about the true story of the Iditarod sled dog race. If you don't know the story, it's fascinating. Okay, back in the late 1800s, early 1900s, there was an outbreak of diphtheria in Nome, Alaska. Diphtheria is a curable disease, but the cure was not in Nome, Alaska. This happened in the winter. Nome is 1,049 miles from Anchorage. The only way to get into Nome was by a plane or train. There's a huge storm going on at the time. And this is Alaska, so a storm lasts a long time, and a lot of snow is getting dumped. No way could a plane get in. The farts they could get a train, even with a big V plow on the front of it, was just to Anchorage, Alaska. They got the serum to Anchorage. That was as far as they could take it, and they knew they had to run it on sled dog. You know, basically sleds with dogs and mushers. Mushers are those who drive the sleds. They are not people who make mashed potatoes, but I thought that's what it was, and I'm a good musher on Sunday afternoon. But here's the deal. It was a race to save lives. It was a race on time. They could not, they could not waste any time. They had a couple of places where they swapped, okay, teams, and gave it to another team, and then the team would go. The majority portion of that race is commemorated every year as the Iditarod Sled Dog Race. It's the most grueling and taxing sport and event in the world. It is considered, if you win it, to be, you are considered to be one of the top athletes in the world physically and maybe even more mentally. It is so, so difficult. Uh, they did win the race in the sense of they saved everyone's lives and people were dying and they were able to get the serum there in time. Everybody ever see the movie Iron Will? It's also an old movie that's another you know rendition of it i hate to break your hearts but iron will is not accurate will did not win the race he actually uh was the youngest person to run in the race at the time but he did not win it and so um you know if you want to watch that movie and i just ruined it for you you can beat me later okay but um there are lots of cool stories and movies about the first you know woman to ever run the race the first woman to win the race the youngest person to run the race, the youngest person to win the race, and some of the greats that have won it multiple times. It's really cool. So watch this, look up here, this is problem number seven, and it is simply a two-part problem. This is uh, Anchorage, Alaska, and they gotta make a journey to Nome, Alaska. Uh, a musher has completed about two-thirds of the race, so they're about right there. And so if we think about this, they're saying this is the portion that is completed, and this is the portion yet to be completed. Right? And so if you add those two portions together, you have the total distance, which is 1,049 miles. Uh, we have completed two thirds of the race. We have one third left. Think about that. This would be X and this would be two X because if you broke it up into thirds, you have three X's. 
We've done two x's, we have one third left, we have one x left. That's kind of hard for people to wrap their brains around. I'm a math teacher, it's easy for me, but I've been doing this a long time, okay? And so in essence, then we have two x plus x equals 1,049. Therefore, 1,049 equals three x, we divide each side by three. I'm not gonna finish this problem for you. The answer is given as a fraction. You're gonna come up with a decimal. This is another challenge for some people. I did teach you in this class, what is 0 0.33333 converted to a fraction? What is 0 0.66666 converted to a fraction? You gotta know that. If you know that, it's gonna be an easy conversion for you. Okay? You guys cool? cool. It's a two-part problem in essence. All right, last word problem type. If you want to take pictures or write any of this down, finish writing it, I'm going to erase nothing important. How did we get 35 and 37 inches? Where did we get 37 inches from? 37? Because one piece is two inches longer than the other. Oh, right. right? 35 plus 2 is 37. Right, you're cool, man. X and X plus 2. Okay, the next word problem type is called simple arithmetic. Simple arithmetic. You can write while I'm writing. I'm going to tell you this problem sucks. It sucks because the identifier is the most difficult. I told you with each one we teach, it would get more difficult. Why would we save one called simple for last? Well, the simplest things in life sometimes are the most difficult things in life. It's weird how that works. People say, what do you mean? If it's simple, how is it difficult? Well, I don't know. Do you read your scriptures and say your prayers every day? You know, sometimes the simplest things are the hardest to get done because you're not motivated enough in them. Okay? Do you remember the children of Israel who got bitten by snakes and the Lord provided a way for them to be saved? What was the way? They had to look at the rod that Moses was holding. Brazen serpent. Ah, if you look in your syllabus, there's something about brazen serpents in there. I love the story of the brazen serpent because when I first read it as a young man, maybe even a child, I thought, man, those people are so stupid. They could have saved themselves. But then as I got older, I started looking in the mirror and realizing there's a lot of simple things in my life I might not be looking at and I need to, okay? All right, simple arithmetic. Uh, the identifier, ugh, it's none of the others. Yeah, it's almost like a process of elim elimination. I can't even say the word. I can whistle when I talk, but I can't say elimination. Okay. There's no percent sign. There's no shape, so it's not a geometry problem. Uh, there's no, you know, it's not about averages or means. You know, I mean, you go through the whole list, and then there's nothing left. You're like, okay, maybe this is a simple arithmetic problem. Uh, what is the given? Oh, man, not much. Not much to give you. You are going to simply add, subtract, multiply, or divide the numbers. I need someone, someone new who hasn't read yet to read problem number three to me. Let's do one from the homework. Straight up. So we've done seven. Let's do three. Let's do three. Okay? Three. Recently, the cost of four 21-ounce boxes of Cinnamon Light cereal was $17.16. All right. What was the cost of one box, right? Okay, cool. Look up here. We got four boxes of 21-ounce cereal. The four boxes cost us a total of $17.16. They want to know the cost of one box. What do you do? Divide what by four? Boom. Done. 17.16 divided by four equals four what? 29. Done. Simple arithmetic. Okay? No, some big formula, nothing you need to memorize. You just got to divide the numbers. What happened to the number 21, though? Is that important? That's part of the name of the box, you know? It's like 21 ounce boxes, okay? Uh, there are a lot of distractions on the path to simplicity in life, okay? And no different here. Sometimes in these word problems, they'll give you numbers, right? We're, we are told our data, we're to extract the numbers. So we're focusing on numbers, but sometimes some of the numbers have nothing to do with the problem. You gotta have your eyes open, you gotta be thinking, okay? Okay, I wanna talk about another problem really quick, and then we're gonna, we're gonna bust it. Can, can I erase this? Mm -hmm. This is the problem that's on the test. Does anybody wanna get a picture of that before I erase it? <laughs> okay, hurry, go, go, go. Yeah. While I'm waiting, I just wanted to put in perspective the musher race. Salt Lake City from Nauvoo is only 199 miles more than that one is. So if you think about the entire distance to find those tracks, you could be sled down from doing it in a day or two. Wow. That's really cool. Hey, that's, oh, thank you. That's so cool. cool. Yeah, 1,049 miles is freaking a lot. I don't know 
One other thing to look at, I don't know that the entire Iditarod sled dog race is that long. I, I think it's only a portion of that 1,029 miles, but you guys have to look that up if I can't remember, but that's interesting yeah, too. It, it is, it is. But the Iditarod is still a very long race, and, it, and it's more than just a day or two. It's, it goes for days, and it's brutal. You know, I mean, you're talking wind chill factors of 70 below zero. You know, you're, you're talking about just treacherous conditions, keeping your dogs alive, keeping yourself alive, staying awake. I mean, it's, 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 it's rad. One time, I'll tell you this one interesting thing. If you don't, if you haven't learned anything about me and things I like, things I do, um, one time I, I went and saw a movie about a guy who survived um, some stuff in Antarctica and did a bunch of stuff down there. I'm watching this movie, and my wife turns to me. She's like, "You'd love that, wouldn't you?" So I'm kind of one of those people who <laughs> I, I could I could dig into that kind of stuff. You know, I just go survive on my own, alone. I, I like I like the battle of the mind, the battle of the body. I'm kind of into that. It's like let's let's see how how far we can take this and make ourselves nearly crazy and die. Have you seen alone? Alone? No, I have not seen it. No, is it a good one? Okay, cool. I'll rent it. I'll watch it. Pull it up on one of my many streaming channels that yeah, like man which is wild except that they're by themselves and they have to film themselves so ah it's like meant to survive the longest out of like 10 people that's cool sometimes i think i could do better than that better than that than a, than a show like survival where i had to do it with like 12 people you know what i mean i think i could do better on the battle alone than having to deal with people and deal with their <laughs> bull crap you know yeah we were alone but they're on different places okay um, we have a new topic to teach you, but before we do, before we do, I want to talk to you about problem number 21. How many people messed with 21? Say woo. Okay. Did it bug you? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. I have found a fascinating truth, okay, in my journey in math. People who suck at math get really good when you reach into their pocketbook, okay? Meaning your personal finances seem to be quite the motivator to understand math. How many people, is anybody in here right now, their grandparent is terminally ill right now? Their, their grandparent's like really sick or, okay, all right, we will not talk about that then. Okay, I was gonna go somewhere else. All right, let's say, let's say that uh, Brother Rich is in an accident and you love me so much, you wanna visit me at the hospital, okay? And so I'm up at the hospital, all right? And, um, and, and you know, you only have a limited amount of time to see me because, um, I don't know, I've decided that I'm going to leave forever after I recover from whatever I recover from, okay? Say, oh, we gotta, we gotta visit Brother Rich, okay? But when you go to the hospital, um, they charge you for parking up there. Now check it out. They charge you $1.50 for your first hour or part thereof, is what they call that. That means that if you park there for five minutes, how much do you pay? $1.50. If you park there for a half an hour, how much do you pay? $1.50. If you park there for one hour, how much do you pay? $1.50. Period. Okay? And then they charge you an additional dollar, okay, for every additional hour or part thereof. Okay? And so if you go for one hour and one minute, how much do you pay? Two fifty. Um, if you go for an hour and a half, how much do you pay? Two fifty. Okay. And so Ed in the story is visiting you know, somebody at the hospital for 250. So let's say you're going to visit me and you, every time you go to visit me, you got just enough time between work and classes. You can spend about an hour and a half and you're just like, you know, telling me bad dad jokes and giving it back to me and calling me a fetcher and all this stuff and bringing me nasty sugar cupcakes <laughs> or whatever it is you're bringing me. And, okay, I think I spit all over my mask. Okay, but here's the deal. Um, you, every time you get a break, you got about an hour and a half. And so you're, you're sitting there going, you know, I'm giving Brother Rich a real service here, um, but should I just buy the $27 weekly pass, you know, because it's $250 a time, $250 per time, or I can buy a weekly pass for $27. So this is a simple arithmetic problem. First of all, the simple arithmetic was you had to figure this out, okay, this equals $250, okay, and I think it probably just helped a lot of you get past that hump, okay. But now the next one is this. These two numbers, I'm going to just do either add, subtract. So here's the thing with simple arithmetic. We are simply adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing the numbers. And again, this is number 3 and 5 and 21 and 31. So what do I do with these two numbers? You're going to divide them. Yeah! 27 divided by 2.50. And you get 
Now, I got a question for you. If you're craving a green M&M right now, can you go buy one green M&M? No. 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 You got to buy the whole fetching bag, right? It's, what's that? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so it's the same thing here, okay? In the, in the math, so there's math in the real world. Yeah, I'd love to teach that class. It'd be a lot different than what they teach, okay? Because math in the real world <laughs> is the math of, like, purchasing, okay? You can't purchase one green M&M. There's no such thing as 0.8 visits. So this means what? 11. It means 11, uh -huh. okay? It means 11 visits. You know, if you cut your arm off, is that 0.8 visit? No, it's still, you still got to buy the whole visit whether you have your arm or not, okay? It doesn't matter if 80% of you goes in. You catch what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is 11 visits. Just for kicks and giggles right now, take 11 and multiply it times 250, 2.5. Go. 11 times 2.5. 2750. You save 50 whole cents on the 11th visit. So if you go 11 or more times, it's worth it to buy the weekly pass. We cool? Mm -hmm. All right, guys, I got to get rid of this stuff. I'm going to erase the middle board. If you want pictures of anything, go for it. I'm going to be writing on the far left board. I'm going to teach you one more concept. Okay? Cool? Okay. As you're writing that down, I want to share something with you. Okay? So we talk about putting something into perspective. Okay? There have been days in this class where you've taught three sections in one day. We have covered 2.6 over three days. I want you to remember that, okay? So when it gets really hard, like word problems, spread it out, I help you take, slow the pace down, understand what you're doing. I've gone over lots of problems with you, okay? You gotta do your part. Make sure you got it all done, extra credit, turned in Wednesday night or 2 p.m. for your class. All right, help me really quick. Three-step process to solving. Uh, the goal equals get X alone. First step, help me. Simplify. And then what? We got three things we do. Parentheses. Fractions. Parentheses. Uh, like terms. And one side. Right? Addition principle, multiplication principle. There's the three step process to solving. Do you know it? Have you memorized it? You fetch it better. Okay? Because you got a test coming up. I told you at the beginning of this chapter one ring. One process to rule them all, right? And this is our process. Tonight's homework in section 2.7, we are learning what we call solving inequalities, okay? Solving inequalities. The first thing we do is we're going to treat the problem like an equal sign, and we're going to just use this three-step process, okay? All the way. I need you to do something right now. Okay, I want you to turn in your books, okay, to section 2.3. So if you're in Canvas, go to 2.3. I want you to look at the homework. This is page 159, 60, and 61. Hurry, hurry, let's go, everybody. Page 159, 160, 161. I want you to go there, I want you to look at it. Look at those problems. I want you to put your hand or a bookmark in there and hold on to that, and I want you to go forward to section 2.7 to 204 and 205 and 206. 204, 205, and 206. What is the difference between what's happening in 2.3 and 2.7? Do you see it visually? I need you to pick up on it. The equal sign is replaced. The equal sign is replaced with what? Greater than and less than. Awesome. Okay. Which, those signs are known as inequality. Okay. In. Whenever we put in in front of a word, it means not. Inequality signs means not equal signs. More than, less than, more than equal to, less than equal to. We're going to solve problems with inequality signs. Well, guess what? The same process still applies. Pick the hardest problem, the hardest problem you can find in 2 7. Hurry. Pick it for me. 31. 31? Or 32. Read, read 31 to me. Go. Uh, it's X. Minus one third is greater than one fourth. Okay. I think there's harder. That's okay. Let's do it. All eyes up here. Do you have fractions? Yes. yes. What's the LCD? 12. 12. 3 times 4 is 12. Go for it. Okay? Look up here. I'm going to take 12 times X plus 12 times negative one third more than 12 times one fourth. Okay? We played this game before. Right? 12X. 12 over 3 makes what? Help me. 
4. So give me minus 4. More than 12 over 4 makes what? 3. So give me more than 3. Okay? I can add 4, add 4. I get 12x is more than 7. Divide by 12, divide by 12. I get x is more than 7 twelfths. Follow the three-step process to solve it. Get rid of fractions, right? Addition principle, multiplication principle, all that stuff. Same stuff. Okay, I'm going to give you a problem now. You all got to watch this. Okay. I swear to you, man. They better come out real soon and tell us we're done with these freaking masks. Because they're pissing me off. Two years. Two years I've been doing this while I'm teaching. I'm not done with it. Okay. Oh, I know. But I'm just saying. Like, I've been patient with this, man. But I'm literally to the point where I'm about ready to be like, take my job, man. I don't really care, you know? But we need you. Yeah. Nice of you to say, but like, I don't you really care. don't. Anyways, um, okay, here's the deal. 18 minus 6y minus 4y. 18 minus 6y minus 4y, all right, is less than 63, is less than 63 plus 5y. Do you, do you know why I, I'm pissy about the masks? Why? Because I've done them out of complete respect, but they are useless. Science even says they're useless. It's just enough to make you nuts. It's all politic now. It's so nuts. Of course. I'm at church yesterday, and I have to announce to everybody, go to the devotional tonight. Masks are mandatory. Hey, what a crock of crap. Like, those masks did anything for anybody there. You know what I mean? Just stop. I've had enough. Record that. Okay, look up there. <laughs> Do you have fractions? No. Look at this. Do you have an equal sign? No. no. It's still like a solve problem. It's still a solve problem because it's an inequality sign. You do not have fractions. Do you have parentheses? No. no. But Austin said you have like terms, and he is right. You do. Good job. And so we combine these two, and we get 18 minus 10y is less than 63 plus 5y. Do you know we did this problem two times when we learned it? At this point, we needed to get all of our y's alone. There are two ways to get your y's alone. Help me really fast. What's one way? Plus 10y. Okay, I hear plus 10y. And I also heard subtract 5y. I love it. Okay, either way. Let's go ahead and do this one first. Cancel this out. 18 is less than 63 plus 15y. You have found simplicity. Go to the addition principle. Subtract 63. Subtract 63. Your calculator will reveal this is negative 45 is less than 15y. Now you can go to the multiplication principle, divide by 15, divide by 15. You get negative 3 is less than y, okay? Look over here. You got to watch this right now. I'm showing you something pretty cool. But if you don't watch, you're not going to learn the one thing that you got to learn tonight. On this one, I get 18 minus 15y. This is a minus right here. Less than, these cancel, 63. I got to subtract 18 from each side. This makes negative 15y. That's 15. Uh, less than negative 45. I divide by negative 15, I divide by negative 15, and I get y is less than positive 3. Are these two answers, sorry, 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 what did I do wrong here? Uh, this is positive 45, my bad, my bad, my bad, my bad. My bad. this is negative 3. Are these two answers, now watch, pay attention, are these two answers the same? No. No, they're not. Look up here. You know, the equal sign, when we did this in section 2-3, it didn't matter which side the answer was on because an equal sign is the exact same on each side. But an inequality sign, that means y is on the more than side. That means y is on the less, less than, than side. side. These answers are opposites. And so, because of this, mathematicians had to create a new principle called the flip principle. Please pay attention. When you solve an inequality, you treat it like an equal sign. You do the three-step process to solving, but in and only in the multiplication principle, meaning the last step, right? The last step in the three-step process to solving, only in that step, when and only when you multiply or divide both sides by a negative number, what do you do? You have to flip the inequality sign, okay? So we come back to this, look up here. 
please, please, please pay attention. We're almost there. We're almost done. You guys have been an awesome today. You got snacks, stories, motivation, review, and now you're getting a new principle. Look up here. Is this the multiplication principle right here? Mm, this no. is the wrong problem. What am I doing? You gotta say brother Rich, pull your head out. Listen, I was like, that's so weird. Okay, is this the multiplication principle right here? No. 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 This is getting all your variables to one side. Is this the multiplication principle? No. No, no. this is the addition principle. Is this the multiplication principle? No. It's yes, so it cool. is. Because you were multiplying and dividing both sides. Were you multiplying and dividing both sides by a positive or a negative? Positive. So is this answer correct? No. Or wrong? It's correct, Fetchers. Look over here. Same exact problem. Don't look down. Watch this. Multiplication principle? No. Multiplication principle? No. Multiplication principle? Yes. Yes. But now we're dividing both sides by a? Negative. So we needed to? Flip. Flip this sign. And now that answer is correct. But it wasn't before. And now these two answers are the? Same. Same. Mm. <laughs> Me? Flexing. You're going to flex tonight, okay? Okay. You guys good? Your assignment tonight is to complete all the 2.6 stuff. Okay, there's only six problems left that I really wanted you to have to work on today. Some of you already did them, but I did three of them in class with you. So you only have three left. Um, and then to do section 2.7, all right? Solving inequalities using the flip principle. Any questions for me? Yes. And both these assignments are due Wednesday? Correct. Okay. And all extra credit that you want to do for 2.6, that 100 out of 18, any extra credit you're doing, that has to be in on time, okay, or you don't get it. So I got two. You need to flip it because it was the negative 15 you were dividing by yep. the negative Yep, because in the multiplication principle, see, look, at the circle shows you where we were exercising the last step, the multiplication principle. Here I divided both sides by a positive, mm -hmm. so it stays. Here I divided both sides by a negative, negative so it flips. it flips. Yes, you can go if you're good. What and else? Then when we're with extra credit, yes. I know you were saying if we're good in the homework, Ox will put it somewhere else. Say that again. So... If we're with the extra credit, Listen to this. if we're homework. good in homework, huh? we can like, you can put it somewhere else, like in quizzes. Oh yeah. Do I need to differentiate? Can I be like, Alex, can you put this here or will, will you kind of do that for me? I'll do it for you. See? Yeah, we got you, man. These okay. guys are pros. They've done this before. <laughs> nice. Yeah. And I'm going to send them a message today reminding them that as they grade these to, you know, if there's, to look at any deficit you have. Okay? Okay. Okay. Cool. Thanks for the cupcakes. Hey, go for it, man.